Hi, thank you everybody for being here. Um, I'm, my name is John Willis. Um, the, the important thing is Bacica Loop there. Um, I do have this presentation online, so um, I've actually done a 30 minute version of this. Um, just give you a quick background. I only have 10 minutes, so I got to go really fast. I've been involved in the DevOps days from the original five years ago. We had the first DevOps days in Europe. I, I brought the first DevOps days over here. I was an early person and um, one of the ninth person in Ops Code Chef. I'm an Ops DevOps person. I've been doing that pretty much 10 years. I've been focusing a lot on the network lately. So um, actually Colin McNamara right there has kind of schooled me on the network and I'm trying to do damage in networking space now with DevOps. So um, I'm not going to give you this whole thing. This is a presentation. I do keynotes for DevOps days around the world. Um, this is one of the keynotes I do. It is online. Um, I, I, there's some really cool stuff. There's a, actually a survey. Puppet Labs does a survey. It's a brilliant survey. There's some good stuff that going on second year. I'm not, I don't really have time for that. Um, and I'm not going to do SDN for dummies. I do do a SDN in three minutes, but if I have 30 minutes, it's awesome. In 10 minutes, it takes 30% of my presentation. Can't do it. Um, so I'm going to skip that to, um, that's SDN in, in like 40 seconds. Um, but here's, the, here's what I'm going to get to. So I, I, Cody asked me if I wanted to talk and what do you want to talk about? I don't know. DevOps, DevOps what? DevOps of everything. So this is my next presentation is this kind of DevOps of everything, right? And so DevOps really has been 90%, um, I would almost 98% uh, myopic on compute. It, you know, the whole, if you look at things like Chef and Puppet, and some people look at me like, okay, John, can you tell me what DevOps is? So let me step away for a second. DevOps is a cultural and professional movement, very much like Agile, uh, driven by a lot of web scale businesses, kind of to change the way, um, if you want to go deep, it, it comes from a lot of uh, Toyota Lean, Lean processing, that kind of stuff. Um, really don't have a whole lot of time to do it, but I want to talk about this. So the DevOps of everything is, um, for 10 years we've been focusing very heavily, if you've heard things like Puppet and Chef, uh, very heavy on, uh, on the compute centric. How do we abstraction? How do we make operations act like software engineers? They, they, instead of going and configuring things, they go store things in source code through abstractions and they actually manage it like a software flow. They actually drive it through a change process, integration process. And so, um, you know, one of the things I've been playing a lot on was kind of what does the network mean in DevOps? So I've been doing that for almost a year now and, and, and so it's interesting because I'm doing, you know, prototypes of taking network configs and storing them in source control and running them through integration processes and that kind of stuff. So it's the same mentality of like, why aren't the network people uh, thinking like the ops people who should all be thinking like software engineers because the factory is a software engineer. So I came up with this idea of software defined everything or what do we mean when software defined data center? So, all right, this is gonna get a little technical and, 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 and complex, but so we look at software defined data center like, and people say, well, it's all software bullshit, right? So what it is is net, it's network storage and compute, right? That's the fundamental. Converged infrastructure was network storage. You hyperconverged now, I don't know, right? But, but the point is, and so why is this important now? Because if you think about what has happened over the last 15 years, we had these first order abstractions. So in compute, first order abstraction is what? VMware, virtualization, KVN, Zen. Are you allowed to say KVM and Zen here? Um, okay. Um, but the, uh, the, so the second order abstraction of compute was what? Cloud computing, a framework orchestrator on top of that. Completely decoupled the physical from the virtual. What's the uh, first order abstraction of storage? Virtualized storage. What's the second order? We're seeing object stores, things like Ceph and things like that. Completely separating a second order abstraction where now the storage is completely divorced from the physical. Right, same thing happened in compute. So what happened in network? We had VLANs. We virtualized the network device, right? What's SDN? promising to do, or better yet, what a VLAN, what a VXLAN and tunnels promise to do, is create a second order abstraction, right? So if you buy this fact that we are actually in a place where second order abstractions actually are doable across the converged infrastructure, call it buzzword software defined data center, and you throw on a DevOps mentality of treating that like a software engineer, then I actually get excited about software defined data center as opposed to some big old slideware where somebody talks about it and they don't have a goddamn clue of what they're gonna do with it, okay? So then what does that mean, right? So we can learn a tremendous amount of stuff from what has happened in compute over the last seven to 10 years, right? And if, and if you haven't been paying attention, things like Chef and Puppet are eating the landscape alive when it comes to compute. Every large enterprise on the planet now is having a discussion about is it Chef or is it Puppet and maybe Ansible on a rainy Wednesday. Um, so, uh, somebody like that one, good. Um, so, so what does this mean? 
I mean, there's another thing going here too, right? One of the things that drove compute and that second order um, abstraction in DevOps was the disaggregation of, of servers. Back in the day, you got a box from IBM that had the software and hardware on it. You got a box from HP with the hardware and the software on it. And you got a box from Sun with the hardware and software. And somewhere along the way, there was this massive disaggregation which happened what, where you actually got your own software and you picked your own box. And what are we seeing in the switch fabrics right now? We're seeing that same disaggregation with things like cumulus networks and now the white box switching and all that stuff. So these are the same disruptors happening over again. And so what I, what I, what I try to tell the DevOps community is we've done, we've done a really good job at changing, institutionalizing software in a compute way, unquestionably. You know, I can name, we're running a DevOps enterprise conference in October and we had 200 CFP submissions I mean, these are small conferences compared to this gigantic insaneness. But the point is, we had 200 submissions and over 250 of them were the biggest banks and the biggest uh, retail companies on the planet telling us how they're doing DevOps in their organization, right? Barclays, PNC, Gap, Target. I mean, you name the company, federal government, right? So what does this mean from a, um, a, a DevOps of anything or software defined data center is we've got to move out of just thinking of a declarative way to configure servers to a declarative way to start configuring everything. You know, uh, the knuckleheads of SDN say the northbound API, but they just think it's a pixie, like magical throw it in dust. But the truth of the matter is, you have to build abstractions. And you have to build real abstractions, not fake abstractions. And real abstractions have already been done with compute with these tools. So if we think about declarative, I need two things to happen to make this happen. I need the people who aren't involved in the DevOps community to start thinking like the DevOps community, and I like the DevOps community to stop thinking about compute as the only thing that needs to be abstracted. So we need to rethink declarative of how we do things. Uh, and then the other really important thing then becomes the source of truth, because in compute, it's relatively easy to point to some source of truth, right? Like it's nodes, it's computer nodes. But then source of truth from a, from a an infrastructure that includes second order abstractions of network storage and compute, like it gets a little crazy there. So I think what's going to have to happen is, um, you might say, well, John has already happened, but I don't think it's true, is the network becomes the source of truth. And it's not what you see in the network or the database you created, it's the gathering of everything. It's like crawling LLDP every five minutes and getting the topology in the network that becomes the source of truth. It's not some CMDB that somebody's like hardened. It becomes the real live, you crawl. It's, it's, it's the Google of your data center, right? So, and then, um, and then I think the, the, the last thing I want to say, and I'm, I'm sure I'm getting ready to get kicked off here, is, um, you know, we need to rethink layer seven semantics, right? We, you know, we, we have this world of layer, you know, uh, two and three, and then we have this world of four and seven, and so we need to start thinking about like the semantics of what we want to do. Like could, there's a guy called Derek Carlson who was the inventor of Cloud Foundry, actually one of the original architects for TIBCO. Now he has a startup and he talks about could we actually do database, um, database ACLs in SDN through the control plane data plane manipulation, right? Like so the point is, um, you know, all the discussion this week is about what SDN can do security and I think that's awesome. Right, um, so if you saw Martin's presentation Monday and then second presentation Tuesday, right, like it's pretty cool, the Goldilocks zone and all that stuff, right, that's pretty cool, but, but I think there's a bigger picture here in terms of you know, all the things we do in IT infrastructure and the semantics that drive that, which hopefully an underlying abstraction of that is an SDDC view of the world that includes network, compute, and storage all as peer first class citizens. I think, I've never done a 10 minute presentation in my life, so where am I at right now? <laughs> okay, all right, good, all right. Well then, uh, then so what? Let's, since we got an extra minute, let's talk about composable infrastructure. Yay! Um, so, so this was part of my, I had a three part presentation, I skipped the first part, I did the second part, and I'll see how far I can get in the, in the third part. Um, composable infrastructure, right? So, all right, if you buy into all that crap that I just talked about, right? Then there's a whole other thing going on called microservices, um, cloud native applications, right? It's a new way of thinking about how you're going to build infrastructure. Because whether you're gonna use Docker or you're gonna use cloud or whatever, 
that all fails miserably unless you actually start what Adrian Krakauer from Netflix, former Netflix, would say, cloud native applications, what Martin Fowler would say is uh, microservices, which is a new way to completely decouple the way applications work. And guess what? This crap has been going on for a long time because there's uh, actually um, years ago, right? Yeah, so you know this, this test, right? The test, go ahead and build me an application that can tell me all the words in, a, in an application. The people wrote all these lines of codes, and the one guy basically, Donald Knuth basically, the called Donald Knuth test, but basically so I could take these composable Linux commands that were not designed for anything else but what they would did, and they actually, that command line string becomes a, 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 an application that solves that problem. So the point is, so, so that's when I talk about a causal infrastructure. And when you think micro, if you hear microservices and somebody says microservices or cloud native, think about this challenge, the Donald Knuth challenge it's called. And, uh, and basically the unique command was not designed to basically count all the words of a novel or a book or whatever. But the point is it fits in a composable infrastructure very cleverly. And, um, and then just to put it in perspective, like, so all the talk about containers, is it important, is it real? Like, so if you think about provisioning time, so I've been doing this cloud infrastructure for quite a while. Like, it, it, there was a time to get a resource, it took eight weeks, right? Um, and then virtualization came along, and depending on how good you were at virtualization administration, what tools you were using, might have been two weeks. There was still a lot of human invention in the handoff. We got into either self-service or IIS, things like real cloud. Amazon kind of broke the ice on us, right? Where it turned out to be two minutes to get a resource, right? And that's cool, right? I can, get, I can get a resource in two minutes as opposed to two weeks. Oh my God, cloud begins, everybody's happy. Developers can get that and that's, that's really great. But then we got pass and pass is like kind of making that even cleaner because applications can say, you know what? I don't need all other crap, I just want this and it works. The reason, one of many reasons of why people are talking about Docker and containers right now is look at the order of magnitude of the instantiation time of a container, right? 500 milliseconds. So here's the thing. If, you want to, if you're a developer, I got developers right now that if they hit enter, if they build a stack service for testing and it takes more than two seconds, they get pissed, right? And a, a year ago, pre-Docker, they would get pissed if it was 12 minutes. Because the truth of the matter is if I want to build a service that had five integrated a stack that had five services that had to be integrated and converged, converged meaning they need to know about each other's interfaces and all that stuff, right? It would take, on Amazon average, in parallel, about two minutes to basically all come up, two to four minutes. And then it would take probably another seven or eight minutes to converge. Oh, who are you? Oh, that's the database. I need to know your IP. Just wait, okay, I missed that cycle. I gotta patch you on the next cycle, right? So, so convergence time of a, of, for a developer or for anybody was probably about 15 minutes. Well, guess what happens now at containers? Convergence times is three seconds, or two seconds, or one second. And guess what? The convergence time is the longest time, because the instantiation parallelization of five containers is 500 milliseconds. The next two seconds is the convergence. And that's game changing. It's game changing, A, on developers who don't want 15 minute, you, 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 any of you guys developers? Do you know any developers? You know what a 15 minute context switch is? It's basically a half a day. So I'm working, I'm working my brains on this problem, and I got my brain, I'm a scientist, I am so deep into this, and oh shit, I gotta hit enter to retest that last line of code that's added on the last thing of the fifth instance, and I'm gonna hit enter, and then I'm gonna check my email, then my wife called, and next thing you know, it's after lunch, and I'm going back to, to do the, uh, the thing. Well, you don't have those context switches when, like, I'm gonna do my email at lunch because I hit enter, and two seconds later, I have converged infrastructure. The other thing that makes incredible productivity is if we do get to a world where if the composable infrastructure is coming and going at rapid speed, I read something the other day that Google actually launches over 2.2 billion containers a week. So there are com there is a, there's a lighting in tunnel where infrastructure is gonna be like flashing light bulbs. Like, instead of interest is coming up and staying up for weeks and months and years. And I know this is futuristic, right? Like, there, you know, in, some people will be right now, I run Oracle and SAP, and this guy's full of crap, you know? And you're right, I am full of crap when it comes to that stuff. But in greed-filled stuff, and let me tell you, people, what web-scale people are doing. You know, you, you know, in the keynote, what's his face? Geiger talked about Uber. Sorry, Geiger, Uber doesn't run VMware, right? Um, like, you know, so 
um, it, Uber's running these, this kind of crap. They're running containers. Containers are the lingua factor uh, of WebScale right now. I, talk, I do a DevOps Cafe podcast, and I talk to once a week, I talk to a WebScale company, and every one of them is actually going to Docker right now or in Docker. Again, I don't mean to say that that diminishes the complexity of the enterprise. I'm just saying that there is a world that is going in a certain direction. And, um, and, in a world, and you can't be in a world where if you're going to get to a billion containers or bil billion of these things that have to start up in a week, where they take 15, 20 minutes per to instantiate. It's going to have to be millisecond. And so that's part of the reason why Docker is all the buzz. Um, anyway, yeah, so uh, nobody's kicking me off that. I'll give you my, you want to know what Docker is in two minutes. Okay. So how do you, tell, how do you explain Docker to a friend? All right. So, like, so Docker is three things. So containers have been around for, since the beginning of time, right? I have been knowing containers. Well, that's what they said about cloud. Cloud is about time. The reason why Docker is important is for these three reasons. And one is, yes, LXC containers have been around forever. These guys commoditized it. So cloud's been around forever. Amazon commoditized it, right? So that's their stake in the ground, and that's a reality that's true. They've made it available. We talk about the unicorns and the horses. Before Docker, only the unicorns could do containers. Now the horses, guys like me, can do that. The second thing is they, they used um, a copy on write file system structure, which was a brilliant compare. And so what it allowed them to do is change the game in terms of images, right? With virtualization, I got to convert to VMDK. I got to convert to an AMI. I got to then convert it to this. And the entropy of conversion and the overhead and the opex of conversion is horrible. This basically is I build my test system in a Docker binary image. I basically think it's OK. I move it over to VMware. I can move it over to Amazon. It's the same binary image all the way through. And last, they modeled a Git workflow. So they basically allow you to treat binary Docker uh, objects as artifacts that can be managed in a Git-like workflow. And, uh, and if you haven't used Git and you don't, you should, and you should understand it, because it is, it is also a lingua factor, uh, factor of, of development and engineering. And if you accept my original premise that we're all going to be software engineers in this SDC world, then Git right now is the most popular. I don't even know if I'm allowed to take questions. I think they're, all right, go ahead. Yeah, so there's a couple of components of Docker. There's kind of the Docker engine, which you basically put on what you could mentally think is the hypervisor, but there is no hypervisor. So this is lightweight virtualization. There are no hypervisors. Oh, it, yeah, anyway, this is a good, uh, this comes right from the Docker site, right? So why is, another reason why Docker is cool is you're not replicating the guest OS all the time. You're sharing the, uh, this is right from there. Uh, so you take pictures of it, but it is on the Docker site. So if you look at the virtualization model, you have typically a host a hypervisor, and then each instance has a replicated OS, right? That creates that two minute, four minute, whatever, installation time. The brilliancy of a container, and Docker didn't invent this, the kernel developers did, is that basically you put a Docker engine on that box, and it's not a broker like a hypervisor, it's just a process. But then what happens is you, everybody shares the OS. All right, I'm done. Um, and certainly, I can ask questions over there. I, I would love to. I, you can tell I like to talk. So, anyway, thank you very much for uh, having the patience to talk to me.